Now let's examine the cosine rule. The cosine rule is a formula which can be used to calculate missing sides or missing angles of a triangle. Like the sine rule, it can be applied to any type of triangle, including right-angled triangles. The cosine rule begins in a similar way to Pythagoras' theorem. The cosine rule states that, if you should take the square of any side of a triangle, it is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides, minus two times the product of these same other two sides, times the cosine of the angle that's opposite the side on the left of the formula. In this example, we want to find the length of AC, which can also be labelled as common B, since it's the side opposite to angle B. In applying the rule, we square the side that we are finding on the left. So we can put AC square or B square, it doesn't matter. I'll put AC square. On the right, we put the sum of the squares of the other two sides, minus two times the product of these same other two sides. So we put eight square plus five square, minus two times eight times five. Cosine the angle that's opposite the unknown side AC, which is 48 degrees. Everything on the right can be entered into the calculator all at once. So we end up with AC square equal to 35.47. That means AC is the square root of 35.47. Hence our solution is AC equals 5.96 centimeters. In this problem, we want to find the unknown angle X. We apply the cosine rule the same way as in the previous question. The cosine rule begins with the square of a side on the left of the equation. How can you know which side to begin with? That's right. We begin with the side that's opposite to the angle of interest. So 8 square is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides, minus 2 times the same two sides 5 and 9, times cosine of x, since x is the angle opposite to the side measuring 8 units. 8 square is 64, 5 square is 25, and 9 square is 81. 2 times 5 times 9 is 90, so minus 90 cosine x. We need find cosine x before we can calculate the value of x, so we can transpose for cosine x by grouping it on the left to get positive 90 cos x, while grouping 64 on the right to become negative 64. So we end up with 90 cos x equals 42. We now divide both sides by 90 and end up with cos x equals 0 0.467. To get the value of x, we press shift, then cosine, then 0 0.467, then the equal sign. You should get x equals 62.2 degrees. To calculate the length of the side RS, we focus all our attention on the triangle RQS. We know the size of an angle and the length of its corresponding opposite side, so the sine rule can be used to find the side RS. In applying the sine rule, we put the side we are trying to find, RS, over the sine of the angle opposite to RS, which is 48 degrees. On the other side of the equation, we put another side 7, over sine of its opposite angle, 60 degrees. To solve for RS, we can multiply both sides by its denominator sine 48. Therefore, RS equals 6 centimeters. To find angle T, we will shift our focus to triangle QTS. Since we do not know an angle and its corresponding opposite side, the sine rule cannot help us. So we will use the cosine rule. We want to find angle T. So we should begin with the side opposite to angle T, which is 7. So we have 7 square equals the sum of the squares of the other two sides, minus 2 times these same sides 10, and 8, cosine the angle opposite to 8, which is t. 7 square is 49, 10 square is 100, and 8 square is 64. 2 times 10 times 8 is 160. We need to find cosine t before we can find t. So we group cosine t on the left and group 49 to the right, while changing the signs of both terms. So, we end up with with 160 cosine t equals 115. Now, divide both sides by 160. We get 0 0.719 on the right. To get t, we press shift, then cosine, then 0 0.719, then the equal sign. Angle t equals 44 degrees. The bearing of r from q should read. The bearing of r from the north of q is 66 degrees. That's right. Bearings simply mean we are measuring the angle from north of the point where you are coming from. So that means we put 66 degrees between the line going to R and the line that's north of Q. In answering part A, we read the bearing of P from the north of Q. 
This is the angle between the line going to P and the line north of Q. This is 66 plus 54, which gives us 120 degrees in total. The sine rule cannot help us in part B, since we don't have an angle, and its corresponding opposite side. So we'll use the cosine rule. We want to find the length of PR. I'll put PR square on the left. On the right, we put the sum of the squares of the other two sides, minus two times the product of these same other two sides. So we put 100 square plus 80 square minus 2 times 100 times 80. Cosine the angle that's opposite the unknown side PR, which is 54 degrees. Hence PR square equals 6,995.44. Our solution is therefore PR equals 83.64 kilometers. In part C, we have enough information to use either rules. Let's use the sine rule. Since we are finding an angle, we will use the formula with the angles in the numerator, substituting the values into the formula on the left. We get sine P over its opposite side 100. On the right, we get sine of 54 degrees over its opposite side 83.64. Now we need to find sine P before we can calculate angle P. So we multiply both sides by its denominator 100. Hence, sine P equals 0.9. Six, seven. To get angle P, we press shift, then sign, then 0, 0.967, then the equal sign. You should have P equals 75.2 degrees.